Everybody ready? Good afternoon and uh, welcome to the MAC. Uh, and I'm pleased to uh, welcome personally a couple very special guests uh, here in Philadelphia. Of course, you know that I'm joined by uh, Deputy Mayor for Public Safety, Everett Gillison, the City Representative, Desiree Peter Bell, Special Events Director from the Managing Director's Office, Giselle Jones, Sam Phillips, Office of Emergency Management, uh, and uh, Chief Inspector Joe Sullivan. Of course, Police Commissioner Ramsey, Fire Commissioner Derek Sawyer uh, as well. In a few minutes, you'll hear from uh, the Secretary of the Department of Homeland Security, Secretary Jay Johnson, the Director of the United States Secret Service, Joe Clancy, and of course, uh, our Special Agent in Charge uh, on the ground, uh, Dave Beach. Uh, we've had an incredible morning uh, with uh, both the Secretary and the Director. We have visited uh, a number of the sites uh, where uh, Pope Francis, the World Meeting of Families, and the Papal Pilgrims uh, will be uh, in our city, uh, the Basilica, uh, and of course, uh, the Ben Franklin uh, Parkway area uh, to give uh, the Secretary and the Director a uh, much more in-depth uh, briefing of the great work uh, that the United States Secret Service, uh, the FBI, and so many other agencies, along with the City of Philadelphia, have been in preparations uh, for months uh, for this historic once-in-a-lifetime event that will take place in the City of Philadelphia. With that, let me introduce to you the Secretary of the Department of Homeland Security for the United States of America, Secretary Jay Johnson. Thank you, Mayor Nutter, uh, a, a good friend uh, to, to me and to the Department of Homeland Security. As the mayor mentioned, um, Director Clancy and I are here along with the mayor, with Commissioner Ramsey, to go over final preparations for the Pope's visit here. This is an NSSE, as many of you know, it has been designated as such. Uh, the NSSE designation is typically reserved for events like the State of the Union, National Political Conventions, uh, and, and this event as well. The thing I'd like to stress is the level of preparation and planning and coordination between the federal government, the city of Philadelphia, and other agencies represented here uh, that have gone into the planning of this event. The mayor and I personally began our discussions about this event months ago, and we have continued that dialogue. It has been a cooperative dialogue, and we both are very proud of the partnership that we've had here. Uh, the level of constructive dialogue, uh, the transparency, and we've worked hard to achieve what we believe will be a safe and successful event and visit by the Holy Father, a safe and successful event for all of those who wish to be here and see him, uh, and one that basically keeps the city of Philadelphia going. Um, though there'll be a lot going on here. We believe we have struck that right balance for the public, and we look forward to a safe and successful visit by the Holy Father here. As you've heard many times now, we know of no specific credible threat directed at the Pope's visit here to this city, and so we fully anticipate a successful and safe visit for the Pope and for the public, and we encourage people to celebrate here in this city uh, the Pope's visit. With that, I will turn it over to Director Clancy. Mr. Secretary, thank you. Mayor Nutter, thank you. While we stand here at the Bolti Agency Command Center, I want to first thank all of our partners that have assisted in the planning for this Holy Father visit. Over 50 of our partners will be located here at this facility to ensure that we have a safe and secure uh, visit. I also want to take a minute to uh, thank the mayor for his leadership, his steady leadership, as we've gone through this process. I've known the mayor for several years now, 
And as we've gone through this nine month or so process, I've seen him with a very calm, steady hand as we've gone through the security planning. Commissioner Ramsey, I've known him as well. I've, to be honest with you, I've studied him from afar when he was first down in Washington, D.C. and watched how he handled the inauguration events. And I'm very pleased to have the opportunity to work with Commissioner Ramsey again as well. The NSSC, as the Secretary mentioned, is a national special security event. We've, the Secret Service has been responsible for over, after these visits, over 50 NSSCs. And what that does, by law, puts the Secret Service in charge and responsible for the design and implementation of the uh, security plan. It also puts the FBI in charge of any crisis uh, investigation and crisis management. And for FEMA, the consequence management of an NSSC. But the NSSC is built with partnerships. This is the ultimate team effort, ultimate team effort. When you look at the collaboration of the subcommittees that come with an NSSC, the NSSC gives structure to these security type events. Over 20 members are, there are over 20 uh, subcommittees and each one is composed of a variety of public safety, a variety of private sector, as well as law enforcement entities. And each brings expertise to this plan. And we rely on that expertise, as we certainly have here in the city of Philadelphia, with the expertise of the men and women of the Philadelphia Police Department. But we're confident that we have a very good, secure plan for the uh, Holy Father's visit, and we look forward to uh, greeting the Holy Father when he arrives uh, next week. Thank you. So with that, uh, we would be pleased to answer any questions uh, that are related uh, to uh, the papal visit. Uh, I understand uh, from a press standpoint having uh, the Secretary of the Department of Homeland Security and the Director of the United States Secret Service uh, in town, uh, they're not uh, necessarily here on a, a regular or daily basis. You may have all kinds of thoughts uh, and questions uh, for them. Today's uh, event is solely related to the papal visit, the world meeting of families, and the arrival of uh, Pope Francis. We'd ask you to direct any other questions that you might have at a later time to their respective uh, press uh, operations. We will only be talking about the papal visit and the presence of these two distinguished uh, public servants. Yes, sir. You're assuming that I can't answer the question? <laughs> I mean, I've seen every episode of Law and Order. I know a little bit about public safety. What are the differences you're seeing in terms of the Philadelphia events, which are mainly outdoors, lots of crowds, versus Washington and New York, where there may be some outdoor movement, but mostly everything's contained inside? Right. So on the Philadelphia part of this, and obviously the secretary and the director can answer for their parts, um, I think, quite honestly, uh, the bulk of the answer uh, is literally in the question. There's no other place. We love New York and we love Washington, D.C., and there'll be fantastic events in both of those uh, cities. But Philadelphia is the place for the world meeting of families. It is the reason uh, that uh, Pope Francis was coming to the United States, uh, and then other offers, uh, extensions of invitation, were extended uh, to him. So that's first and foremost. The reason he's coming to America is because of the World Meeting of Families Congress. Second, there are three huge public events in the city of Philadelphia, and there are any number of events in both New York and Washington, D.C., all ticketed in much smaller uh, venues uh, and nowhere near the level of public facing and exposure uh, to the public uh, as in uh, the city of Philadelphia. That, of course, in and of itself uh, brings additional requirements, additional challenges, more assets, but also more opportunity uh, for people to see uh, Pope Francis in Philadelphia. As a matter of fact, in the Washington, D.C. website, uh, they will tell you, after giving you information about the D.C. events, they literally say on their website, the best place to see Pope Francis is in Philadelphia uh, for uh, the magnitude of events that we're having uh, here in the city. From a security standpoint, I'll certainly let the experts uh, respond to that part of the question. I hope you detect that pride and competitive spirit. <laughs> I'm very proud. I'm very excited. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Secretary. Uh, Joe, do you want to... 
you're absolutely correct. Each venue is different and presents different challenges, an outdoor event as opposed to an indoor event. Uh, with an outdoor event, such as we see here on the Ben Franklin Parkway in Philadelphia, it creates uh, enormous challenges, but we have to adapt to that, and we have. In fact, uh, we know there's businesses in the area, obviously communities, and we've reached out, the Secret Service has reached out to over 500 uh, businesses and uh, communities, community groups to ensure that uh, they understand what our plan is, and, and we want to hear what their concerns are too. And from a security standpoint, uh, obviously we'd have to bring in more assets uh, to ensure that uh, the out outdoor sites are uh, well secure. Has any city in the United States ever been shut down, uh, had such major infrastructure shutdowns since uh, World War II, comparable to what we're planning for Philadelphia? And that is not with the negative connotation that I asked that question. Really? Um, <laughs> So, uh, again, from the city side, and this is a partnership uh, in terms of the Secret Service, when you talk about um, restrictions, when you have uh, the amount of people that we're anticipating and a ticketed event, and whether it's the west of 20th Street where there are tickets or a public event, a public open space, um, you all know by now uh, that there will be uh, what we've referred to in our language as a loop uh, which is on uh, Saturday evening uh, with the Pope coming from uh, Eakins Oval uh, and the stage area, uh, processing in a vehicle all the way down to City Hall and around and back. That is the reason that that area, uh, people within the, what we know in our language, the secure perimeter, that's why uh, they're going to have to go through a magnetometer because of their proximity. Uh, to Pope Francis, which is the same thing uh, that folks would go through if it was President Obama or any other president or a head of state. Second, uh, the secure vehicle perimeter for, again, I think rather obvious reasons uh, from a security standpoint, you have to stop vehicles uh, at some point in time. Uh, that perimeter is approximately a block to a block and a half off of uh, the uh, secure perimeter. After that, people can pretty much do uh, whatever they want. Obviously, uh, with anticipated crowds on the streets, we have tried to restrict vehicular uh, traffic and activity. Again, what we now call the Francis Festival Grounds from cars coming into that area, but cars can ride around uh, in that area. People can walk, people can bike, all the way up to uh, the uh, secure perimeter. The only major, uh, the two major uh, roads uh, that are most affected, of course, have been Franklin Bridge for people coming over from New Jersey and using the bridge for emergency vehicle uh, access and movement back and forth. And again, as I mentioned, I think at the press conference on Wednesday, 76, uh, better known as the Schuylkill Expressway, I want you to, again, think about uh, what we're trying to accomplish here. If you can't get off at 30th Street, if you can't get off at 23rd Street, if you can't get off at 15th Street, and you can't get off at 8th Street, Schuylkill Expressway would virtually become a parking lot because people have no way to exit. And the reason you can't exit at those points is because they are either proximate to or in uh, the uh, secure uh, area or the uh, secure vehicle uh, perimeter, and we don't want those inbound cars coming in. Other than that, you can pretty much travel anywhere you want. And again, we know that that area downtown is three square miles out of 138 square miles uh, in uh, the city of Philadelphia. So again, I'll let them talk about other cities, uh, but this idea that somehow there's, uh, it's uh, you know impossible uh, to move around the city is just not correct. So, I understand. That's a very, very benign historical context question. Right. Perhaps a more narrow construction would be of the 50 NSSEs to date, have any involved the shutting down for any period of time, the highway, a bridge, to the extent that we have in Philadelphia? I, would, I don't know anything about the other ones. Well, um, let me answer the question this way. I've, I've been in other cities uh, where we've designated NSSEs, both uh, during my time as secretary and before. And after reviewing the security and the zones with perimeters for the city of Philadelphia, um, what I'll say is basically what the mayor said. I'm struck by the areas that will not be closed off, that will continue to be open access for, uh, for large segments of the public. Uh, we've worked hard to establish a perimeter that um, best optimizes um, and finds the right balance between security for the public, 
uh, for the Pope's visit, as well as maintaining uh, access for the public outside the perimeter. So uh, this is a large city, and uh, there are large areas that, uh, uh, around which there are not these, these perimeters. Well, certainly the federal government pays for a lot of it, uh, but there are obviously contributions by a number of, by a number of agencies, a number of jurisdictions. Uh, <clears throat> but it is something that is, that is indeed budgeted for. Uh, I am tempted to talk about the fact that Congress has yet to enact a budget for the U.S. government uh, for FY16. I don't want to get into that in this event, but I could say a mouthful about that too. Well, I don't know if we I don't know if we have a set figure for it just yet. Uh, part of it depends upon subsequent events, but it's it's probably a knowable figure that we can provide at some point. At some point, I think we can. And I would just say this: uh, NSSCs are budgeted for 4.5 um, million dollars uh, in the a budget year. a year. 4.5. That's our universe. Yes. Is that for each NSSE? And there's three of there's four of them actually. Most three stops at the New York UNGA. So we're talking about four times that. Is that correct? And is that just federal? And that's the next level. That's the annual budget. That's the annual budget for it. Yes. And then 4.5. Yes. For any, well, for, for N, yes, for NSSEs. That's correct. Correct. Director Clancy, can you, can you address the, the concerns and the complaints that we hear from folks in the city of Philadelphia who believe that this is, the security measures are overkill? Obviously, they're not the experts who you are, but we hear all the time from people who say there's just too much fencing, there's too many secure zones, too many hoops to jump through to get to this event. What do you say to those folks? Yes, and thank you for that question. And, and it goes to the uh, previous question as well. We have been through events similar in some ways. Every event is different, certainly inaugurations. In 2009, we had 1.8 million people come for President Obama's inauguration. So we had to uh, close down some areas, some roadways, et cetera. Uh, this one is more unique because of the, uh, the amount of travel the Pope will do within the city of Philadelphia and the volume of people that are coming as well. But you have to have structure. If you don't have structure, you have mayhem. And you have to have routes available. So if there is an incident, we can certainly get the Holy Father out of the city. Uh, we can, and also that we can get the participants and the guests out of the city. So you have to control those roadways. And uh, can, we have some fencing, I know. And some of the fencing, to be honest with you, is set up so that businesses can stay open. Uh, and again, that goes to the outreach that we had to the uh, 500 or so businesses. Uh, but we are continuing to listen to uh, uh, individuals or groups that uh, need some more clarification on those on those measures. What is the approach to security in those areas that you don't have to go through metal detectors? You were talking about how many open areas there are. How do you secure those areas? Well, we define what our secure areas are where uh, our protectee is most vulnerable. And that's where we are concerned of uh, from a Secret Service standpoint. I know the commissioner has been, as he mentioned earlier today, is uh, very concerned and, and looks at the outside the perimeter and the city of Philadelphia. It's quite a challenge out there as well while all the guests are coming to the event. He's been very uh, adamant that he is focused on uh, the exterior areas as well. And I don't want to speak for the commissioner, but. Right. So, I mean, I think primarily, if I'm understanding uh, this question, I mean, within those secure areas are primarily the responsibility of the United States Secret Service. Outside of those areas, primarily responsibility of Philadelphia Police Department, State Police, other uh, law enforcement agencies, and that's the level of, of coordination. So, you know, again, we talked about on uh, Wednesday's uh, press conference, not only the rest of the Francis Festival grounds, and you will see uniform officers, and then you'll you know, you won't see the public folks that you don't know are, you know, law enforcement and the rest of the city uh, that we have to protect and take care of. So it's a, it's a combination and a coordinated effort of in a secure zone, primarily responsibility of the United States Secret Service, outside, 
everyone has some level of responsibility, but ultimately it's the Philadelphia Police Department and our partners at the state. Oh, we got two going on. Do, do your follow up and then we'll come right to you. How do you, how then, I understand what you're saying about primary responsibility, but then yeah. do you give a homeland security standpoint? How do you approach those areas that are maybe farther away from the coast, but uh, still have a lot of people in there? So Philadelphia Police Department. Yeah. yeah. And there'll be a lot of uniform officers, plain clothes, who of course we won't identify, video. and other folks. I mean, there's video. I mean, there are any number of ways. Uh, you know, and this center uh, helps us, our own op uh, 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 operations center, the DIVIC, Delaware Valley Intelligence Center. Um, you know, we just opened, I guess the other day, our uh, traffic operations center. We talked again about how that will help us. So there are a lot of eyes and a lot of resources and assets all over the city, no one central place, but all coordinated uh, in a way that everyone is getting real-time information about what's going on. Too many people at this particular magnetometer, let's move them along. Build up of traffic somewhere else, we need to redirect, change the traffic signals, which you're now able to do from the traffic operations center. All of those kinds of things happen in real time because all of these folks are uh, coordinated and uh, can communicate with each other in an unprecedented fashion. Yes, sir. Right Yes. Got it. What's what's the question? Yes. Bring a big bottle of water. Okay. It's going to be a long day, and we don't fo want folks to get uh, dehydrated. Food, water, cameras. I mean, as I think, as you well know, uh, there is. Um, I mean, you can look at it a couple ways. There's a fairly extensive list of things you cannot bring. Uh, you won't find any of those items uh, on that particular list. We want folks to be comfortable, you know, wear comfortable shoes, whatever your clothing, you know, you might have, you know, who knows what the temperature is going to be at that time, but certainly food and water uh, are essential items and obviously uh, cameras. We expect there'll be a lot of cameras out there that day. Um, Director, just to, just to follow up on that, uh, Director Clancy points out that if you go to secretservice.gov, what you can bring into the screened areas is uh, spelled out. Couple things. So, so they can walk down JFK. Yes, on the pavement. Straight shot down, or as you described, a couple other. Okay, SEPTA. Um, <laughs> people can walk on the sidewalk, SEPTA. Um, John Rollins told me to tell you that. Um, with regard to who's out there, uh, first and foremost, I mean, obviously there will be a police presence, but there will also be uh, kind of a, almost, I think, a pilgrim welcoming squad uh, from the thousands of volunteers uh, that are going to be out on the street as well. So, I mean, this will be a very, you know, welcoming, warm, happy uh, environment uh, if folks, you know, get off the train at uh, uh, 30th Street uh, or however else they might, uh, they might enter the festival grounds. There are going to be a lot of people around. Uh, to welcome, show, direct, uh, and uh, really help folks uh, know how to best get there. And again, the tons of maps out and all. So again, you know, one of the things we've talked about at the various press conferences is um, for individuals, make a plan. I mean, this is not necessarily the kind of thing. I mean, I know some folks will wake up maybe Saturday morning or Sunday morning and say, hey, I want to check this out. This is going to be really cool. Okay. But I mean, try to maybe have a little bit of orientation uh, to the city of Philadelphia before, uh, before you arrive, and that should be a part of your planning. What route am I going to take? Which way am I coming from? How am I uh, getting there? And what happens, or, you know, at the opposite end, what happens when I pop up uh, out of uh, 8th and Market uh, to go to Independence Hall? Which way do I go? What's going on? And you'll have the same experience. Stand Gentlemen, right there. That's probably everywhere, right? That is uh, probably, uh, Mr. Secretary, probably the most popular map uh, in the United States of America right now. Probably yeah.
Absolutely. Uh, I, if I'm, again, remembering correctly, I believe that uh, Aramark uh, is the um, uh, official food and beverage vendor, uh, you know, paraphernalia, I mean, they're kind of doing all of that. And uh, their um, uh, food and beverage relationships uh, and, and people that they work with will be on the grounds. Uh, for folks to be able to uh, to access uh, those activities, it will look, I think, to some extent, much like you know, if you've experienced uh, uh, Fourth of July uh, here in Philadelphia, you see vendors in a variety of places. But these will have uh, been a part of uh, the um, the Aramark uh, system. Time for one more, right here. Yeah. Well, I think I think if the secretary told you that, you'd probably get arrested. Um, but I'll, he'll let me he'll give this. you a more concrete answer. Uh, in a robust fashion, uh, part of the reason for this very facility is information sharing. It's something we do all the time in connection with events like this, and on an ongoing basis. And it's something that, frankly, we are becoming better and better at through um, information sharing bulletins. JTFs and the like uh, in this day and age, the Department of Homeland Security, the FBI is continually sharing information with Commissioner Ramsey and officials like him all over the country. And that is especially and acutely true in connection with events like this. So thank you all so much. I've got to get the secretary back home. Thank you again for being here. Appreciate it. Thank you all.